The Big Ten Conference is one of the oldest and most decorated conferences in the entire country, and having an extensive list of rivalries comes with that territory. With so many teams that have played each other so often throughout history, of course some of the interconference games have become some of the college sports world's most vibrant. This video will be a lot like the Big 12 one I did a while back, so it'll follow a similar format. But since the Big Ten has more fleshed out rivalries than the Big 12 does, I'll try not to spend too much time on them individually and get right into the rankings. Remember, the tiers are based on the rest of the conference more so than the rest of the country, and this is all just my opinion as a relatively uninformed college sports fan. I'm not going to get it all right, so if any fans disagree with my rankings, be sure to let me know why in the comments below. Let's get right into it. Of course, the Big Ten has a whole bunch of rivalries. To keep the video somewhat respectable in length, I'll be covering the most well-known games in conference, and I'll try to rank games based on the sport they're most vibrant in. Like, uh, Purdue-Indiana might not be a massive football game, but it is on the basketball court, you know, and so on. Of course, to cover the most prominent games, I'll be focusing on games listed on the Big Ten Conference's Wikipedia page, which isn't the most respectable source, but it still gets the biggest games out of the way. Let's start with the Land of Lincoln Trophy game between Illinois and Northwestern. The game's relatively even at 57, 55, and 5 with an Illinois lead. Aside from a stretch in the late 70s and 80s, there really hasn't been a stretch of dominance for either team in this rivalry, making it one of the more balanced ones in conference, at least in football. The renamed trophy rivalry is fitting for the state of Illinois, and even though it doesn't seem to carry the same weight in basketball as it does in football, the rivalry is still one of the more underrated in-state ones in the country. I'll give it a B-tier rating. Next up is Ohio State's only trophy rivalry, and it's with Illinois. <laughs> the battle for the Eli Buck Trophy is one of the more odd ones in college sports, especially college football, and its trophy for the football game is even odder. Like, it's a turtle. <laughs> Despite Ohio State running the rivalry during its total run, it's one of the conference's oldest and deepest rivalry games. Still, the two teams haven't played in six years, and Illinois' last win was in 2007. It's not a game that gets the fan bases up and excited. I'll be generous and offer it D-tier for the trophy alone but it's well and truly dormant. Next is the battle for the Purdue Cannon between Illinois and Purdue. How'd the Boilermakers get away with owning the name for this trophy? This is another fairly even football game between two similar programs, but the real interesting aspect of this game comes on the hardwood where the stakes between two proud programs are even higher. That series is 105 and 90 in favor of the Boilermakers. I'd go so far as to say that the basketball version of this game alone is enough for it to be ranked B tier. Very underrated game. On to Indiana with their rivalry with Michigan State for the old brass spittoon. This is another game that looks really lopsided if you just look at the football side of things, but on the basketball side, the Hoosiers lead 72-59 to with a bit of fervor against the Tom Izzo-led Spartans at some point in time. It's a game that excites the fan base, but not as much for these two schools as their more prominent rivalries. I'd say it's C-tier. Next up is Indiana-Purdue. This game burns. <laughs> the Old Oak and Bucket remains one of the more underrated football rivalries in the conference, and despite Purdue owning Indiana on both the football field and the basketball court, the Boilermakers lead the football series 77 to 42 and 6 and the basketball series 126 to 92. It still remains one of the strongest the conference has to offer. Bob Knight throwing chairs, punches thrown by Isaiah Thomas, and Gene Keedy's willpower accentuate a basketball game that was so strong, even in football, when the two teams were separated into two opposite divisions by geography, they still played every year. It's A tier. After that, we have Iowa and Minnesota. The battle for the Floyd of Rosedale in football oftentimes used to determine how the West was won, so of course, this game can get pretty testy at times between two Midwestern fan bases. Minnesota runs the total wins, but recently the game's been all Iowa until last season's upset in Iowa City. It's a part of the Quadrangle of Hate, which is a nickname given to the interconnected rivalries of the four westernmost Big Ten teams, up until the Pacific expansion. It's not quite Cyhawk, but it gets a B-tier rating. The Heroes Trophy between Iowa and Nebraska. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't know this game had as much of a fervor as it did, but upon research, it just appears to be because people from Iowa don't like people from Nebraska, and vice versa, more than the game itself. There is some history with this game going back to 1891, but it didn't really gain traction as a rivalry rivalry until the Nubs joined the Big Ten in 2011, adding it to the quadrangle of hate. I can't judge a rivalry based on state pride alone. Maybe I'm wrong here, but it just feels like an average rivalry to me, even if it is Nebraska's biggest one in conference. Should never have left the Big 12. D tier. Iowa-Wisconsin is a different story. The Heartland Trophy game goes back to 1894 before the creation of the conference, and while Wisconsin does lead the all-time series, the game is fairly close in record between the two. 
Another arm of the Quadrangle of Hate, the trophy itself was only created in 2004, but it still remains one of the most interesting games in the Big Ten, especially during the divisional era, where it was one of the West's most circled games on the calendar. It's C tier. Next up is Maryland-Penn State. Maybe this could have been a bigger rivalry had the two teams been like in a designated Northeastern conference or something, but I mean, just look at this all-time record, man. Nittany Lions fans, do you even care about this game? Terrapin fans, do you? It's our first F-tier rivalry. On to Michigan and Michigan State, otherwise known as the Paul Bunyan Trophy. As one of the more prominent and oldest in-state rivalries in the Big Ten, this game gets a lot of publicity, and rightfully so. Michigan students actually protested to keep the Spartans out of the conference, and it's one of the few rivalries in conference that's just as tense on the basketball side of things as it is on the football side. Ignore the all-time football win percentage for a second, and just remember that for games like these, Sometimes all you need is- Whoa! He has trouble with the snap! And the ball is free! It's picked up by Michigan State's Jalen Watts Jackson, and he scores! On the last play of the game! Unbelievable! On to the little brown jug between Michigan and Minnesota. This is another one of those trophy rivalries that seems a little odd in the modern lens, especially since the rivalry seems to be all about dormant these days. Uh, Michigan's been so historically dominant, in fact, that the Gophers have only won two games in the series since 1987, three since 1968. Like, the trophy's cool, but for all intents and purposes, uh, the rivalry, at least for half the participants, is dead. D-tier. While I could spend some time on Michigan's trophy game with Northwestern for the George Jewett trophy, I think the game's purpose is more so to remember Jewett as an athlete and a trailblazer for both programs than it is like a real rivalry. So as such, I won't rank it. But if you haven't looked into George Jewett's story, I heavily recommend you do so, especially this month. Anyway, yeah, you knew this was coming. S tier for the game. Nothing I can say about it that hasn't already been said. This is the benchmark for college sports rivalries. On to the land grant trophy between Michigan State and Penn State, and this is honestly one of the more interesting trophy games in the conference. Originally being created to celebrate both schools being early pioneers in the concept of land grant universities. Like the game's gotten a lot more competitive since Penn State's admission into the Big Ten in the early 90s, but the schools did play each other in the past historically. So it's fairly even on the football front too with Penn State having a one game lead, but it's hard to rank um, one, because the trophy is more a celebration of a system that's come under fire in recent years. And two, because some corners of both fan bases love the game, and some corners also couldn't be bothered about it. So I'll rank it somewhere in the middle at D tier. But you know, just know that I like it personally. Minnesota, Nebraska, the $5 bits of broken chair trophy. S tier, no notes. Minnesota, Wisconsin, the border battle is interesting. Another arm of the quadrangle of hate, this game is pretty much equal across the board, at least in football. The game used to be for a slab of bacon until that disappeared, and then Paul Bunyan's axe took over in 1948, which is probably the most upper Midwestern thing I have ever heard. <laughs> Despite a recent run of whiskey dominance, uh, this really does feel like a game that will stand the test of time. A tier. Ohio State and Penn State's a hard one, because they're both good programs in the East that probably should have formed some sort of rivalry, but they don't really have one. Like, Penn State prides themselves on being unrivaled, like that's their big thing, and Ohio State's two main rivals are Michigan and, like, I don't know, the Big Ten Conference game. Like, F tier because nobody wants to care about it, even if they're both good. Now we get into the new Pacific rivalries, and I'll list them both here and talk about them at the same time, uh, Oregon-Washington and USC-UCLA. It can be argued that these two games are the, like the premier rivalries on the West Coast, especially in football. So it's clear that the Big Ten was being really proactive in getting all four for their Western branch. Uh, they want to sort of monopolize that area of the country. And, and the best way to do that is by getting like the most prominent rivalries there. Like the only one they didn't get was Cal Stanford and that went to the ACC. Like both of these rivalries are very bright. They burn pretty significantly within their individual fan bases. I'll list them both as A tier due to the scaling with the game, but within their fan bases, they're definitely S tier, like especially Oregon Washington. That game, that game, I'm surprised it doesn't have a name. Like that's how vibrant that game is. So I'm going to say high A for the Ducks and Huskies, low A for the LA schools. 
So there you have it. That's my relatively uninformed opinion on completely arbitrary rankings of rivalries in a conference I have no stake in. Um, uh, poor Rutgers. Still kind of just there. Maybe they can be friends with Maryland or something as the two teams that belong in the ACC instead of the Big Ten. Um, I'm kidding, guys. So if you guys are a little more informed than I am, maybe you're a fan of one of these teams and the rankings just seem off. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Again, this is just from what I've seen online or from what I can gather from these schools based on how they play each other in their respective sports. Do you guys want to see more tier lists like this from me when it comes to conference rivalries or am I just so woefully off base that I should never touch this topic again? You know, just completely leave it alone. Um, rivalries are some of the most interesting parts of college sports because they're so different from their pro counterparts in just about every facet. Um, so I think they have a really important role to play when discussing the histories of schools and conferences and really college sports as a whole. As always, thanks for watching. Be civil in the comments. And hey, I'll see you next time.